We finished off the walls in the master bath. We've installed the vanity and the countertop and set all the tile, which we're now protecting. Our next job is to finish off the shower. And we'll start by removing these plastic covers that have been protecting the valve stems. These are the handles of scutcheon and shower head that we'll be installing. In fact, we'll be installing the same style here in both bathrooms on the second floor. All the pieces are chrome plated brass and will be highlighted by these ceramic caps, which will snap over the hardware. I'll take these escutcheons and you can have the adapters. Okay. The escutcheon and the gasket slide over this holder, which then goes on the support and screws in flush with the wall. There you go. And the handle adapter that comes with the valve assembly slides into the handle like so and snaps in place. We set the handle position by tightening the valve screw, and we secure it by screwing down the handle screw. And we finish by snapping on the ceramic cap. All right, now we're ready to finish off the shower head. We're putting this Teflon tape around the threads on both ends of our shower arm like so. I want to wrap it around about four times. That should give us good seal against moisture. Well, thanks. Now we take the long end of the shower arm and screw it into the shower arm fitting we installed during the rough-in. There we go. And the shower head just screws on top of that. Well there, that does it for the shower installation. Pretty easy actually. We'll give it a test later on. Right now we're installing the shutoff valve here in the toilet, the whirlpool, and the vanity supply lines. The nice thing about these is you're able to shut the water off at the fixture if you want to do any work on it without having to shut the water off in the entire house. First, we cut the cap off the copper stub. Now remember, we've still got the water shut off to this area. Then we put on a slip nut and a ferrule over the stub. And we screw the nut onto the threaded end of the shutoff valve and tighten with a wrench. With all the shutoff valves installed and turned off, we can now turn on the water to the new system next to where we connected it here down in the basement. The way we do this is turn on the main valves that we installed earlier. That should do it. With the water on, we can test the shower and clear the supply lines of any particles or dirt that might have settled in them. And later, we'll clean the filter that's in the shower head. It's a good idea to do this with each of the fixtures after you've installed them. We're all set to put in some more fixtures. I'm going to start installing the toilet here. But first, I have to do a little work on the flange. We have to chip out the floor mortar that seeped in here where the flange bolts will rest. And we can slip the bolts into the slots and anchor them with washers and nuts. Finally, we can tap out the flange's protective plug, which opens up the drain. The toilet is made of vitreous china, and this model comes in two parts, the bowl and the tank. And underneath the bowl is the discharge opening. And we're going to need to seal that up, so we'll be using some wax rings. Now this wax ring has a gasket on it, and that's going to slip over the opening and make the connection to the drain. Now normally, you would only install one ring on a toilet. We'll be installing a couple because our toilet flange ended up a little low on the finished floor. The mortar came up a little bit higher than we thought. So consequently, we'll be installing a couple rings and this will ensure us a nice tight seal. All right. Now we've got the ball the right side up and we're going to place it over the flange and line up the holes in the bottom of the base here with the bolts. Okay, Oops. See that one, right? Once the bowl's in place, we just hand tighten the nuts over the bolts and then give it a little quarter turn with a crescent wrench. Now we want to rock the toilet a little bit to help seat the ring into the flange. And once that's firm, we want to check it for level and then tighten down our bolts. Okay, right there, that's good. Okay. 
Now you don't want to over tighten the bolts or you could crack the china. The tank goes on next and the main thing is getting this drain lined up with the hole that's in the bowl here. Now we line the holes in the bottom of the tank up with the holes in the ledge of the bowl. The holes are for the bolts that go down to anchor the tank to the bowl. Rubber washers make it watertight. We secure the bolts with nuts from underneath, tightening with the pliers below and the screwdriver above. I've just cut this chrome-plated copper pipe to serve as our supply tube for the toilet. Now this is flexible tube and I've already bent it to fit into place. We use a ferrule and a nut on the cut end to secure it to the shutoff valve. Then we line up the washer on the other end of the supply tube and screw the compression nut under the tank. Finally, I tighten both nuts down. There. Now once the line is secured, you can turn the water back on and fill up the tank. <laughs>